Uh, it says mental congestion by 2032 it will be seven times worse because the survey done as well. Um, and the other thing that I also wanted to add was uh, uh, people, people want to move the, the business, most of the business areas, they want to move it away from the CBD area. Uh, they want to move a lot of a lot of like business areas out of the CBD, like maybe in Prosperita and stuff like that, so that you can not have everyone congested in in the CBD. And also, uh, what's also in the report is uh, they want to create malls, little malls for for different locations. Say, for example, you stay in Rockingham, you have your own mall where you can shop, and you're not forced to come to the the CBD. Okay, public transport, minibus, and bus concept. Yeah, but uh, uh, also what I found out is that the city has a, currently a lot of buses. It's just that uh, they are not registered on the road, but the situation will improve. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Good morning, Jesus. My name is uh, Jesus Chavango. That is my, my name. And some people call me Jesus. So uh, I don't mind which name you call me as long as it's, you are calling me. So it's <laughs> um, I'm going to take you through about my about a proposal. And uh, the first uh, this is a proposal for the traffic uh, situation in Vino. We have uh, spoken about the the, 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 the Vino population. We spoke about the the current uh, burdens or problems that Vino faces uh, uh, currently. And this is our proposal. And uh, for us, we, we for about the public transport. We would like to start talking about the public transport. And uh, we thought uh, it's it's good to. As use also mid buses instead of uh, of uh, uh, the big buses, right? So if we introduce these mid buses to serve as public as public transport, it will be easier because we we don't need so many so many uh, stop buses like for for big for big ones because these these buses can uh, move freely and that they can go near to people's places and uh, we we found, we, we, we know that to get the buses, if you want to get uh, all of the bus first, you need to, to get up early, and you need to walk a uh, considerable distance. So if you take, if we introduce these mini buses, like uh, these, these mini vehicles and stuff, they can go near to people to people's place. They can go actually into streets, and, and uh, it's going to help, it's going to help the population. And uh, working time for public transport can be extended. So which means if you introduce these mini buses, uh, you can have uh, a, a number to call, and uh, these buses can work at any time of the day because they, they will be able to help people. Like, if we talk about, for instance, we have like, night shifters, people working in the night, and there are also people like, there are people that leave work very early, I mean, very late. So, if you call these people, if you call these buses, like, for instance, you, you work in, in Klenvinuk and you stay maybe in a Chowese event transport. And uh, you, 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 you work like you, like you are 10 people, right? right? Like 10 people. You can call these buses and they will take you in. It won't be much more, it won't be too expensive to the city of Vindu. And uh, lower rate to people, um, lower rate compared to private context. So, which means if you, if you introduce this, 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 uh, this concept of the mini buses, people will pay less money because like if you, I believe that you know people that when they leave left late work, they have to pay double. So in the night you pay double the tax, the tax firm, right? And um, currently uh, there, there, there are these more, which is not so, which is not so much for the city of Vino uh, considering the population. Uh, like 779 municipal buses like operating in the city and uh, we need to create more bus terminals. Also, if you if you would like to introduce more buses and more projects like moving Loop. Move Loop is a, is a project uh, created by GIZ that uh, is helping people is helping the current situation of the uh, uh, of the public of the public transport. Next slide, please. 
And uh, another one is also to improve the existing uh, private vehicle concept. So uh, we, we know that the more, more privilege is given to the, um, more privilege is uh, privilege on the current roads compared to other modes. So private vehicles, they, are, they have more privilege on the roads, like provision or the construction of the roads was mostly given to uh, provision for the public, I mean for private vehicles. There's no lanes for, for people who want to walk, there's no lanes for bicycles, so we need to take this privilege and give, and, 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 and uh, especially for the bigger roads, to take some of the lanes and uh, introduce bicycle, bicycle lanes. Significant, significant reduction in traffic congestion, so if we reduce the amount of uh, if we introduce the, um, uh, the bicycle lane, so which which means people will, will feel safe to ride bicycles to work, and especially if they want to go to near places, and this is going to reduce the amount of uh, private private vehicles on the road. And if the private vehicles on the road are, are introduced, uh, the uh, reduction there will be a reduction in congestion, especially during peak hours. This will help to save time and is also going to help to reduce uh, environmental environmental pollution. And uh, if we introduce, uh, and one of, one of the concepts that we, we thought is, is also to introduce a heavy levy on the uh, import of old cars, because currently there are so many so many cars coming inside, inside Vindu, coming to Vindu, but then uh, the thing is to register these cars, you don't you don't really pay you don't really pay much. So if there is heavy lady on this on, on this on, on this on this on the private cars, then it's going to help the reduction of this of this private car and it will help people to move to another to some to other modes of uh, transport, which is walking and uh, cycling. I believe this is my last slide and my Uh, as my colleagues have stated earlier, uh, our whole concept is, um, is, let's say, I could say, surrounded by the environment. We are trying to take care of our environment because too many cars are creating damage to the environment. So our whole concept was like, uh, we're trying to save time and set the environment at the same time. That's why we are trying to shift people from uh, using uh, modes of transport that are harmful to the environment to move to the more greener systems of transport. And uh, to achieve this concept, uh, our, 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 our concept looks at the expansion of roads. Like right now, the, the roads, the current roads, have no infrastructure for for the cyclists and the pedestrians and those using motorbikes. So the whole concept will be creating new infrastructure so that more people will be encouraged to walk because some people won't walk because it's not, it's not safe. Uh, the share cyclists share the same lanes as the motor vehicles and. Motor vehicles sometimes don't have regard for motor, motorcyclists because they have the right to use the roads. The roads were designed for them, so for the cyclists, they are just like pirates trying to squeeze themselves on the road. <laughs> uh, the the provincial, like it, the, the, uh, as you can see, they states that even though twenty nine percent of all trips are made by by walking, cycling, there are no infrastructure. So we want to put more effort on this infrastructure, improve so that people move from the, 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 the much used mode of transport like private cars, taxis, because they need more carbon dioxide damage the the ozone layer, then we have more problems again. So the whole thing is centered around the, the environment, ecological, uh, it's a, I might say it's a ecological concept because we are trying to look at the environment. And the, the city of Bindu 
said that it is possible to expand these roads because most of the roads are they have provisional space for future expansion. So the whole concept is possible. It's just that more money needs to like people need to be aware of what's going on for them to support this concept. That's why we came up with this concept to try to inform people as well so that they can be aware of the situation that is going on <coughs> and so that they can support the concept. If in future people can shift knowing that they are doing it for a good cause, they are saving their environment with the living. With that being said, I will give my colleague to round up. <coughs> Ah, we are sorry for the volume. Um, it's fine. Oh, you, will you be able to hear my voice? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you want to press? Yeah, I don't know. Let's stay down there. Okay. Uh, so, what we were saying is actually just. I mean, we only presented the various modes of transport in window, which consist of cyclists, uh, private vehicles, taxis, as well as public. But then we have seen that most of the privilege was given mostly on private vehicles, which is not efficient. So meaning like, so uh, cyclists and the other various modes feel like sort of like neglected. And therefore, we, came up with a proposal of basically this major four concepts. Hmm? As you say that the town is expanding, so we think these four major concepts is the best concept that can accommodate Windows future population. So I'm gonna I gonna conclude the, the private transport which should be reduced by imposing heavy more levies on it so that people can make a shift on it and maybe avoid more accidents. Yeah. You know, it's, also, it's also important that uh, we need to also focus on the cyclists, uh, which is the proposal of the game we came up with, because the concept is to have a balanced uh, transport transportation system, right? So we need to balance everything. So the four have to be accommodated on the current transportation system. So cycling has also to be a, a concept that the, the city has to focus on it because instead of, uh, it's, all, it's a faster way of going of, uh, of transportation in a certain way, and uh, it's also healthy. So when you cycle, you are going somewhere and you're also working on your on your health status. So it's a good thing to, for the population. I will not take up much time because we're still very long and short bus. In the bus system, we need more buses on the roads, um, more bus terminals, um, so that we encourage people to use more of the bus system. Because now the bus is not available. Because even if you have so many students here, buses are not available. More bus terminals close to campuses, bus lanes in our roads, that will bring a bit of a solution. If we have more buses and more bus terminals, so people can actually have access to these buses. Because there's so many students even here now, it's very hard. People don't even know where to get a bus. So we need more buses on the roads in short. I believe we'll okay. Yeah, similar to cycling, walking is also healthy. For, it's, good, it's good for fitness. But the whole concept, like uh, our current system, doesn't accommodate the pedestrian or it may not work because it's not safe. That's why I also came up with that concept that if in future, uh, uh, the infrastructure will be improved, then people maybe will be encouraged to work since it will be safer in the future if the whole concept is like applied later on in the future. With that being said, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Let's conclude the presentation. This is our reference. If you want to follow up on the whole proposal, you can feel free to the information. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. I intend to write this afternoon to the mayor of Windhoek a letter 
and to make a proposal. He should employ the first seven speakers immediately. <laughs> and instead of that, he can fire feed the other. Ah. <laughs> Thank you very much. The next one. Okay. and definition of terms, which will be done by myself. The importance of public and private transport, which will be done by Mr. Ashili. The advantages of public and private transport, which will be done by Mr. Kiri. General overview and conclusion, which will be done by Mr. Jairus. <laughs> okay, so um, how did public and private transportation come about? I'm going to give you a brief introduction to explain the whole thing. The year 1886 marked a very important day in history because it was the year that the first automobile was manufactured. And this changed the way we live and communicate as a whole. In a very short time after the manufacturing of the vehicle, vehicle manufacturers changed the accessibility or they enhanced the accessibility the price efficiency or the cost efficiency and the speed of these vehicles. As they did that, more vehicles came about and this caused pollution and traffic congestion. So this, the, 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 the increase of pollution and traffic congestion gave birth to different modes of transportation which were categorized as public and private transportation. Public transportation can be defined as the integrated system of vehicles such as buses and trains which operate at regular times on fixed roads. And this transportation system is, as the name suggests, used by the general public. Private transportation is a form of transportation which involves the use of private owned vehicles to take individuals from place Place. That is the end of my part of the presentation. I'm going to hand the floor to Ms. Ashi to continue with the importance of public transportation. Now, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As introduced earlier on, my name is Jose Ashi, and I'm going to present the importance of public transport. Um, starting off with the first one, please, before I start with my presentation, take cognizance of the fact that I'm going to be using um, examples that might not be realistic. But uh, this is just aimed at uh, explaining the, my, my, my points on a better note. Prevent, uh, it prevents traffic congestion. So basically what you're saying is, a public transport prevents traffic congestion. How? Uh, taking a good example of uh, Namibia that has a population of plus minus uh, 2.8 2, 2. million, 
Um, let us take that example and have that. Let's let's have that population into two and say that half of that population lives in Windu. So uh, if, if if half of this population uh, lives in Windu, that would uh, sum up to 1.4 million people. Let's assume everyone of that uh, 1.4 million people have a car. So we are saying that uh, private transport, you you are going to have 1.4 million of cars in Windu. It's uh, compared to public transport where you will just maybe require 500 buses to carry this uh, same amount of people. That is how it reduces traffic congestion. Prevents uh, parking uh, congestion. Uh, that is, that is straightforward. Uh, uh, if you look at the municipality buses, uh, for example, City of Bindu, what they require is just uh, uh, bus stops. But then uh, uh, private transports, they require most to have parking areas where you park your cars. So this is. Uh, what you are talking about when, when, when you talk about congestion of uh, uh, parking slots. Reduces traffic accidents. I mean, that's obvious. Uh, some of you, some of you here, remember a public transport, a public transport mode is governed by institutions that are likely to comply to the laws and rules of, of the country. As opposed to uh, private transport, some of you guys in this class have been driving ever since the age of three. Three. <laughs> but seven is easy. <laughs> Some of you have been driving at the age of 16 without a driver's license. It is very, very impossible uh, to do that in a public transport mode because these institutions, such as, such as City of Bindu, governs the rules. Uh, they have requirements to hire drivers like uh, uh, they need driver's li licenses, they need uh, experience, driving experience. So that is likely to reduce the accident rate as opposed to private transport where anyone basically can take the car out of the house and drive to town and uh, impose a risk to the uh, rest of the drivers. Reduce road and parking infrastructure. That one I explained already. It is cheap, but it's self-explanatory. If you have uh, uh, public transport, people, a lot of people are getting into one car thing. Take, for instance, in, 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 in Vindu, we pay $7 to go on those buses. And then if you have your own uh, private transport, well, fuel, Mr. Irasi will testify to that. <laughs> Reduces inadequate mobility. What do we mean by this? Um, the, 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 the concept of a public transport targets every person from the poorest to the richest. Everyone can get on that bus and go. But then private transport is only for those that can afford it. Adequate, uh, inadequate mobility will mean to say that everyone, everyone in the country, if we are to engage into a, a, a uh, public transport system and everyone can be carried or can be can move uh, freely reduces excessive energy consumption and self-explanatory like I say if you have 1.4 cars as compared to 500 buses 1.4 cars they have a lot of emissions as compared to uh, uh, 500 buses to carry people reduces pollution and emission yeah it reduces okay that one is, is, is also part of the, the other one job creation what do we mean? Um, job creation is, um, if you have a, a public transport, say a municipality bus, that uh, municipality bus will be uh, 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 susceptible to uh, uh, maintenance, uh, being clean, and uh, the drivers, that is how it creates employment. As opposed to private transport where you just have, uh, if, if, if it's a mechanical engineer, they might uh, uh, maintain their cars on their own. So uh, it, 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 it it sort of cut down that concept of uh, uh, creating employment to the, to the whole nation. Importance of private transport. Privacy. That's very important. Uh, um, uh, public transport, unfortunately, does not allow for privacy. You are going to sit in front of uh, uh, or beside uh, someone. So that is the, 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 the thing about privacy. Fast. Obviously, when you are in a, uh, your private car, uh, there are no rules that, 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 that will govern your speed, for instance. So you can move faster. You can move faster. There are rules, but you are not forced to comply. You are not forced to comply. That's what you are saying. There are rules, but you are not, nobody is going to control your, your, your right to, to step on that pedal. Spacious. Okay, that's a misspelling. It's supposed to be spacious, but you have your own space. Say, for instance, when you go into... Uh, um, no, no, let's, let's talk about uh, um, when, you, when you have a private jet as compared to a, a, a what, uh, a, an airplane, a public airplane or whatsoever. When your, your, your amount of goods that you can put into, that you can go with in a, 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 an airplane that is for the public use will be limited. But when you have a private jet, you can put your car in there. You'll go 
So that is spacious city. You will have your own space. Flexible and convenient at self-explanatory. <coughs> Property position value. What do we mean by this? When you when you have a car, you have that value, you have that satisfaction that you own it. But public transport nobody owns it. It's, uh, the, the, the government or the city of or city of Inluk owns it, so there's not that satisfaction in value that you own something. So that is the, the importance of uh, private uh, grand Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me hand over to Mr. Billy to continue with the presentation. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Ewan and I'm going to take you on the disadvantages of public transport. Um, the way I'm going to present this is that I'm also going to give you sort of remedies to how you can identify the problems. First of all, in public transport, you have limited comfortability. This basically means that you can't have the same comfort you have in a Mercedes in a bus. Because you see, a Mercedes has leather seats, you know, warm seats. But in a bus, they try to make it as cheap as possible. They're not flexible in the sense that you can't take a bus to your house. Those city of Indian buses, you can't get them to drop you off at your house. OK, it's possible to get a taxi drop you off at your house, but then it's not really flexible. The taxi driver has the right to say no, but then, you know? And then it's viable only in areas of high population density. Um, that's because it's expensive to buy buses. Buses are not cheap. It's cheaper to buy a golf than a bus as an individual, because a golf is what, 120,000. A bus could be a million or two million, yes? But then the reason public transport is cheaper is because that two million is spread uh, is spread amongst a lot of people at one time, other than you who's paying 120,000 for one car. So it's viable only for high population density because it's spread amongst a lot of people. The total cost, the operating and maintenance costs. Um, high level of logistic skills are required. This is because for you to actually make a profit, you need to effectively run the buses. You can't just say, will just run them, however. You need to effectively run them, you need to service them, you need to maintain them. So you need a high level of logistic skills. And also you need to, to, to calculate how much fuel it takes. You know, there's a lot of things that go into running buses. There's the high purchasing and operating costs that I've already spoken about. It's very high, but then it's spread amongst a lot of people. That's why the cost on you is cheaper, but then the cost on its own to one individual is expensive. Um, we should note that public transport infrastructure in Vinduk must be more centralized in the sense that, unlike in Vinduk, in other countries like where I'm from, if you're going to take a bus, you, you can take it from any area, like for example, Capitura or Dorado or whatever, but then it ends up, all the buses end up at one place. It's like a depot. It's a big place where buses park and they get the offload people and load people again. This is basically just to avoid this thing of having of having people people having trouble to get buses. Because if you know I want to go somewhere, you just have to go to the depot, then you look for the part where there's a bus that's taking or that's going to that direction. There's disadvantages of private transport, high accident rate. Just like my colleague Ashili just said, no one really controls the speed that you drive at, or how awake you are, or how far you drive before you rest. There's so many factors that will contribute to the high accident rate, but also because on the road, people who usually own private cars are rich people. Rich people are usually in a hurry. And if a rich person is in a hurry, he doesn't mind bumping into a taxi because he can afford to pay for that taxi. So, you know, he doesn't care. Um, causes more pollution as compared to public transport. The causing more pollution, you shouldn't say a small car causes more causes more pollution than a bus. No, we're talking about, is it per square meter? Because a bus, sure, it's got the diesel engine in a bus, is, it pollutes the environment. That much you can't run away from. But then buses are very long. And if you put two cars, you can fit two cars on this side and two cars on the other side. Or let's just say the number of people that it's carrying. Because in private transport, a car has a maximum of about five to seven people but a bus can take about 23, 25 people. Now, five to seven people, that's about four cars, yes? And if you actually do the calculation, the, the pollution caused by one car and you multiply it by four, you find that 
it's more pollu causes more pollution for you to use four cars other than one bus. Plus, on top of that, the bus design, the buses or the trains, especially trains actually, the trains are less polluted because they're electric trains and they don't really use fossil fuels. Um, private transport consumes more energy because people are driving in a rush. People just don't control their mobility, they just move around anyhow. And on top of that, private cars, the design is more, consumes a lot. More energy in the sense that it consumes fossil fuels and money. Private cars consume a lot of money. High operating and maintenance costs. This is for every car, every private car there is. Basically, if you have a Merc and you mess up the suspension, you're going to have to pay about 20,000 just to fix that. But if you don't have a Merc, that 20,000 can, you can take a bus to Tura and back for an entire year. Almost more than an entire year actually, because 14 bucks times 365 is not 20,000. But yeah, that's that. Um, a lot of urban space is required. This is because private transport, you know, you have to accommodate the number of cars. There are a lot of cars. So you need a lot of space, you need a lot of roads, you need a lot of other things. Also, private transport isn't just private cars, it also includes cyclists. Anything that cannot be accessed by the public, but only by you, is a mode of private transport. So yeah, these are the disadvantages of private transport. Okay, as introduced to you earlier, I'm Master Jairus, and I'm here to take you through the, um, just the general outline of uh, public and private transport. Now, public transport, as uh, my colleagues explained earlier, is much more conducive to use in areas where there is a high population. For example, cities like New York, San Francisco, in Boston. They have a lot of people that need to move from one place to another um, at a very short period of time. Okay? And private transport is more convenient in less populated countries. For example, in um, uh, South Dunkelville State, where it's just in the middle of sea, maybe on an island or something like that, people would normally use public transport because you have a lot of ground to cover and there's just so much you can do in the area that it's inevitable. Okay, um, Dr. Michael Ruflangi said that um, public transport, for every dollar that you pay using public transport, 85% of that dollar is going back into the country. So it's used for paying my like, cost of maintenance, paying for um, how do I call it? the mechanics and the bus drivers, and all other components. So it's basically money that will be put back into the economy of the country, and thus it can increase the economy. <coughs> and fi about 15% of that uh, dollar that you spend in public transport, only 15% of it is used for purchasing of oil, maybe abroad or something. And then for private transport, it's used 85% 80, of that dollar goes directly into purchasing of oil, which is very uneconomical for our country. Yes. Okay, um, to conclude, uh, transportation systems contribute a great deal to the, um, to the global warming and all the other uh, impacts, bad impacts on the environment. So, hence, it is on all of our benefit to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide or the pollution that we cause to the environment in order for us to live sustainably and um, not have any more diseases and other things that are caused by the increase in temperature. Okay. Uh, so in conclusion, it is much, much better for us to use public transport, which reduces the amount of um, pollution and also kind of is convenient because it makes things much more cheaper and increases our economy as we are just a developing nation. Okay. So for any queries or questions, please do contact me on the, <laughs> my email address and then I'll contact my fellow groupmates so that we can discuss anything yeah. that might be of interest. <laughs>
So this uh, reference list has been a wonderful idea to change. Oh. Thank you very much. I can inform the head of the department that there's no need for me to come again to Africa. My students can take over this lecture. <laughs> of our presentation, we're going to talk about our work and um, is, uh, if Dr. Hest is going to produce uh, our presentation and then talk about the cost involved in both uh, public and private transportation. And then um, uh, Hest is going to talk about the effects of 